Hi there, it's Imu. So today I'm gonna talk about some very interesting stories or anecdotes between two famous calligraphers, Wang Xizhi and Wang Xianzhi. So in Chinese, the last name actually comes first. So Wang is their common last name. So can you guess the relation between them since they share the same last name? Well, actually they're the father and son relation. Wang Xizhi, like Xizhi is the father, and the Xianzhi is the son. As their first name sounds a little bit same, like Xizhi and Xianzhi. So I think I've talked about Xizhi a little bit before. Um, in the first intro video, I will put the link above. And also, I've practiced his uh, famous number one semi script, Lan Ting Ji Xu, weeks ago. I will also put the link there on top. So um, he's definitely very well known calligraphers. But his son, Xianzhi, is also a very famous Chinese calligrapher, but in different fields. So Xizhi is known in the semi-cursive field, but Xianzhi is known for the cursive field. So I will put the script here for reference. We can take a moment to appreciate his work. So Xizhi actually has eight kids, seven of them are sons and one daughter. And I think the only one that becomes a famous calligrapher like him is Xianzhi, the youngest son actually. Xianzhi is Xizhi's seventh son. So as you can see, it's not like the dad is a famous calligrapher, is so good at calligraphy, so he can pass along everything he has to his kids and everyone become a famous calligrapher like he is. No, it's not like that. Only one of them becomes a very famous one. Xianzhi didn't just copy what his dad was doing. He actually invented his own field, like on the cursive script. So I guess there must be some special relationship or chemistry between him and his dad. So let's dig more into it. So Xianzhi started learning Chinese calligraphy very seriously from his dad when he was seven or eight years old. And one day Xianzhi was practicing by himself and he was writing characters. And at the same time, Xizhi was moving to his back very sneakily, quietly, without letting Xianzhi know it. And suddenly he threw out his hand and try to grab the brush out of Xianzhi's hand. And if Xianzhi hold like this, it will be very easy to grab it out, right? But because Xianzhi hold it very firmly, so Xizhi failed to grab the brush out of his son's hand. After he failed, he talked to his wife. This son is gonna be a great calligrapher one day. When I first heard this story, I think it's just bullshit. But now I think it makes sense because when people are concentrating on something, they tend to put a lot of energy on the equipment that they're using, whether they are panning or they're dancing or I don't know, they are giving a lecture, well, they will put a lot of strength to the chalk. So especially when you are practicing Chinese calligraphy, you really wanna um, put a lot of strength into the fingers and then the strength is passed down to the brush and finally, it's shown at the strokes and on the paper so that your character will look pretty strong and sturdy. Xianzhi practiced for two years and when he was 10, he feels pretty confident in his handwriting and he's pretty proud of himself. So one day he asked his dad, Dad, do you think I can like be a great calligrapher in three years? If I just practice like this for another three years, I will be great, right? And Xizhi, the dad, just smiled and said nothing. And at the same time, his mom just um, shake her head and say, well, no, it is too short. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> and then Xianzhi said, what about five years? Five years, I must be great, right? And his mom said, mm -mm. Xianzhi didn't buy it and he was pretty anxious and patient just want to know the answer like after how long can I be a great calligrapher as you dad so he kept asking his dad and say hey dad do you have any shortcut or secret that you can tell me so you know how Xizhi answered his son he looked around and point to the 18 big tanks of water in the yard in the old days in a lot of people's house they will have 
several big tank in their yard. So there are several usage. For example, they can use it to collect some rainwater in case of the water shortage. And also they put the water inside their yard in case of the houses getting on fire, etc. So yeah, Xizhi just point to those 18 tanks and say, whenever you can finish this 18 tanks of water, you can be a great calligrapher. Wow, so 18 tanks of water, you have no idea how big the tank is. It's like taking forever, I don't know. So Xian Zhi still didn't buy that. He feels like his dad was exaggerating. So um, maybe people might ask, how do you use water to write? So now we have the ink, we can buy it from Amazon. But in the old days, people actually use the ink stick. They don't have the ink directly. They have the ink stick, which is a hard stick. And they use pour water inside and then grind the stick in the water. And then the water will become darker and darker. And finally, it becomes ink, right? So that's how people get the ink in the old days. So that's why you're going to need the water. But you know, every time you just need a little bit of water and to use all those 18 tanks of water is going to take forever. So this is Xizhi's answer, especially if we compare it to nowadays, people encourage their kids more. For example, if some kid asks me, hey, do you think I will be an artist? Like I will be a great scientist. I would just say, sure, you will. Like. I don't want to put out his or her little dream inside his heart, you know. Um, but in the old days, especially for Wang Xizhi and his wife, they both are pretty strict parents. They are setting very high goals for their kids and also keep telling their kids that it's not enough. The reality is tough. It's not like your dream can be an easy thing to achieve. Everything takes a lot of effort. It's like they just want to show the cold, the true, brutal reality to the kid at the very beginning instead of like faking it at the beginning so that they can encourage them, right? Okay, this is their style. What happened to the Xianzhi later? Well, Xianzhi, of course, he didn't buy it. He practiced for another three years. And when he was 13-ish, he feels like, yeah, my calligraphy is good enough now. So he collected all the artwork that he's proud of together, like very thick pile of papers, and show it to his dad. And Xizhi just look at the paper page by page and with no expression on his face. And suddenly he stopped at one character, which is Da. It means big. Why it means big? Well, originally, if you look at this character, it looks like a guy stretching out the arm and the legs, right? So it's like making yourself bigger. So this means big in Chinese. So he looked at this character at a dot at the bottom, and that's changing to another new character, Tai, which means very adjective, right? He said nothing. He just put that one single dot there and returned this pile of paper to Xianzhi and said nothing. So Xianzhi was pretty confused, like, because his dad didn't say this is not good enough or didn't say this is good at all, just put a dot on one single character there. And then he showed his work to his mom. So the mom just went over the pile of papers like his husband did, right, one by one. And then after going over the whole pile of paper, she stopped at the same character, the Tai, the one that was added a dot by Xizhi. And she stopped there and said, my son has practiced this for five years, but there's only one dot that looks like Xizhi. She was pointing at the exact dot that Xizhi just added. It's just freaking weird, right? That's so freaking surprising. I was so shocked when I first read this story. And I believe Xianzhi was as shocked as me because they, like, the mom and dad never communicate with each other. And out of all those characters, she could recognize that that one dot is different from everything else. But at that time, the mom still believed that this dot is by Xianzhi, right? But Xianzhi knows that the dot is actually by his father. So at that time, I guess 
I don't know. I guess Xianzhi was devastated, like at least like very frustrated, because after five years of study, I was still so far behind of my dad. Even my mom, who is not a calligrapher, can recognize the difference. At the same time, I couldn't even recognize the difference. I thought I was as good as my dad. So, oh, I I don't know. It's so frustrating. After this. Xianzhi never asked his dad how long does it take for him to become a great calligrapher. He just spent a lot of time in his study room and trying to make progress in terms of the strengths of the character, creating his own styles into it. But yeah, I don't know how long that process is, but eventually he becomes a great calligrapher that after this thousands of years, everyone still know him, like remember him. Yeah, that's a quite big achievement. These are the stories I want to share about Xianzhi's calligraphy studying process and Xianzhi's educating process. I don't know how you guys take this, but I think it's very different from what people are currently doing when they are educating their kid, not just in the West, but also in China, because these stories are from like thousands of years ago and China has changed a lot. I guess um, even in China, people now are more on the encouraging side when it comes to educating their kid. For example, I always see very little kid ask their mom or dad saying, hey mom, dad, can I go to Harvard one day? Can I be a great scientist one day? Can I be a champion in swimming one day? And their parents will say, yeah, for sure, you will, definitely, you have the talent, blah, blah, blah. Like everyone is showing a very warming and encouraging attitude. I'm not saying that it's good or bad because I have no experience in fostering a kid, but I just say this is the common trend. Like most people are doing it like this. I think it's good in the sense that it helps the kid to foster a dream in their little mind. By having the encouragement from their parents, they might gain confidence and maybe eventually they will go on this path and chase their dream and finally become a great scientist or whatever, right? But on the other hand, in old Chinese saying, we have yan shi chu gao tu, which means straight teacher foster great student. And when it comes to Xi Zhi's way of educating his kid, I think like in the old days, people are more strict, especially in traditional Chinese culture. So I don't know, this the encouraging one and discouraging one. Maybe it's better not to say discouraging, but like show the cold reality one. They're kind of opposite ways of educating, right? I think on the one hand, discouraging one might make the kid uh, lose interest, like because uh, the way like Xi described, it's so hard, right? So it discouraged him and then he just said, eh, I'm not gonna do this, I'm gonna choose a easier route. But on the other hand, well, I think this could help him filter out something that he didn't have a very strong motivation for. For example, some kids are really into a lot of different things but maybe some of them, he didn't sleep over it. He just like it for now because he think it's fun. But for some other things, he really have a gift for it. And he actually have the very strong inner passion about it. If you just show the kid the true reality, well, none of this role is going to be easy. You will have to be persevere and you will put a lot of effort that normal people wouldn't need to put into this field to achieve the higher goal, blah, blah, blah. And you might help your kid filter out something that he is not really into because he will say, oh, okay, then I don't really like it because it's too hard. And finally, there might be one thing that he has the talent and he has the resources, he's gifted. And after you showing him the brutal reality, he's still gonna go for it. And that's the field that is meant for him, right? That is designed for him. And I think in some sense, this is helping the kid find a more suitable path for him or her. 
Yeah, that's just my understanding. I, I'm just saying that maybe just encouraging the kid, no matter what the situation is, isn't good. And also discouraging the kid at all time is also not good. Maybe we should find a balance between this. Or like it depends on the kid's personality. If the kid is very shy, don't feel confident about him or herself, maybe we should encourage him. But if the kid is already very pumped up and a little bit arrogant about what he or she has achieved, maybe we should just suppress, suppress him a little bit or like set higher standard for him or her. Yeah. I don't know. I just find the stories very interesting and um, very different from what we are doing right now. So I think it's fun to think about it a second time. Maybe we can get something new out of it. Okay, if you guys enjoy these stories or disagree with what Zhi was doing to his kid, comment down below or let me know. Or if you have other things that you want me to cover in terms of Chinese calligraphy or Chinese culture or my opinion on something, let me know. And see you guys next time.